Did you say Hoarder Waste Mountain? I'm in. Good afternoon. Sometimes you see headlines and you just, you just got to know more. And so certainly that's the case today. We'll get into it in a second. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John Schenk. I'm a realtor, broker, St. Louis, Missouri. We help buyers buy homes and we help sellers list their homes for sale. Um, I do a podcast. I do a live stream daily. Most of the time it's at nine. It's been changing lately. But anyway, I wanted to get into this article, so let's get to it. Uh, and we'll just go over it. Uh, it says, landlord forced to dig out of hoarder's human waste mountain after getting keys back. You know, as a, as a former property manager, I suspect this would be the, the worst thing. I mean, as a property manager, to have to tell your um, investor, landlord, what's going on would be a nightmare. Um, at the same time, it's like, how do you, I don't know, how do you, how do you live this way? So anyway, here it is. An incensed landlord is in preparing to take the, his former renter of 18 years to court for approximately $20,000 after she reportedly left his three-bedroom house in filthy disarray, stockpiling mounds of moldy human and animal food, used toilet paper, sacks of garbage, and bodily waste in every corner of the Manchester, England residence. So this is not in the United States. It's in England. He says, I was... It was just absolute carnage in every room. I just don't know how humans can live like that. It must have been going on for years for it to get like that. And so this landlord, he's been landlord to a series of very good tenants for more than two decades, shared a now viral video of himself wading through the wall-to-wall -wall litter his ex-occupant apparently left in each room. Now, here's a picture. I have not, I have not seen the video. And, and to be honest with you, I mean, if you've watched the show Hoarders, you know. You just know. There's the bathroom. I mean, it's bad. It's bad. Uh, he says, when I'm walking through the kitchen, you can actually hear things cracking under my feet, and that's all bottles and plastic rubbish. I had to dig to get to the back door. That's how much stuff was on the floor. It was all stuck together. Cat litter, dog food, everything. It was horrendous, and the smell was unbelievable. Now, have you ever been in a house that smells bad. Like I've had to list homes for people and at times they're very smelly people. <laughs> or you have to go and you have to show a house that's, that stinks. Ugh. I call those shower days. Walking in this house is definitely a shower day. It says nauseating scenes of the bathroom show the bathtub and toilet, which are blanketed by garbage and caked in what appears to be feces and scum. Used toilet paper and other personal care items clutter the floor. In the bathroom, she's obviously done what she's done and left all the stuff outside the toilet. So I'm presuming it's blocked and it doesn't work. Um, it's interesting. It says he claims the tre treacherous tenant who has not been named, but reportedly receives financial support from the UK government and is believed to have shared the residence with her partner and son was reluctant to return the house keys to him and his business partner after she moved out a month ago. I wonder why that is. Why do you think it is that someone would be reluctant to turn the keys back over to the landlord after a situation like this? When the veteran landlord confronted the former boarder about the vile vandalism, he claimed she told him that her $666 deposit should cover the damages. Now that's interesting, $666 deposit. She said, whatever it costs to do up, keep my bond and use that. But the bond was only 666 bucks, and it's going to cost me $1,865 just in trash bins. Noting that he and his business partner will have to completely rehab the home thanks to the horrendous mess she reportedly made. And that's true. I mean, when you have a situation like this, just cleaning it isn't going to work. Like, there's going to be mold issues. There's going to be smell issues. There's going to be rotten flooring. It's obviously, you're going to be... Um, cosmetic issues i mean just cleaning it out at this point is not going to work he said it's going to cost us about twenty thousand to get it right it's going to come out of the business you don't get that in rent pay so if everyone did that i wouldn't have a business and that's that's the life of the small time landlord i mean if you have a hundred units 
and you've got cash coming in and cash going out, you're good. But if you've got like two units and one of them is in this situation, you know, you're not getting that back in your rent for a long time. The owner who's been spent the last five days shoveling disgusting debris out of his house and hopes to complete the cleaning by Christmas plans to sue the former tenant for renovation costs. I don't know how it works in the United States. I'm not a lawyer. I'm going to have to ask a lawyer at some point. I mean, is this a criminal act? Is this, can you sue for something like this? Does your renter's insurance pay for something like this? Whatever it costs, we will be taking her to court for. I know she hasn't got a lot of money, but it needs pointing out that you can't leave landlords in this situation. Uh, that Hernan plans to sell the property in the new year. You can't just let someone walk away from houses like this with no repercussions. I don't want her to leave the next landlord in this situation as well. It's not fair. Well, think about it. She's already moved. So someone else has already got her. So unless she bought a house. So, I mean, it's bad. It's a bad situation. It says he's also filed a criminal damage complaint against the tenant with the greater Manchester police. And I thought this was a fascinating part of the article. It says, but a spokesperson for the government in his region released a statement that appeared to hold him at least partially accountable for the disruption. So they're saying it's his fault that this unit got into this situation. It says, it's important that landlords carry out checks on their tenants prior to letting a property, said a speaker for the Oldham Council, and that they carry out regular checks to ensure tenants are complying with their tenancy agreement that the house is in a good state of repair. So... I mean, would a, would a previous rental check um, find that this person is a hoarder? We don't know. I don't know that that would happen. Normally, background, background checks are limited to, like, did the person pay, the, pay their rent on time? And is there any, are there any criminal, you know, have you been arrested for, you know, destroying a property or something like that? Or is there an eviction notice or something like that? It would not have been, you would not have looked up this situation, I don't think. And then he says, the owner says, but he's maintained he's been a stellar landlord who's never had any issues with renters in the past. What winds me up is always geared against the landlord as if all landlords are bad and they're not. I've been doing this 20 odd years and I've never had one complaint from any of my tenants. Well, I hate to say it, but you may not have had any complaints because you're not doing anything with them. You're just letting them live in this. Now, I do have some thoughts. I do, do have some some opinions and I did want to go over them with you. Number one, I don't even have it on my sheet. But um, when I was a property manager, what would normally happen is that a service person would tip me off that something was going on, you know, wrong at the property. Uh, so like, you know, they'd call and say, have you been over there in a while? And I'd be like, no, like, it's pretty bad. You might want to take a look sometime. And then, okay, thanks, right? So in, in theory, this, nobody's, been, nobody's been over at this house for a long time because you know somebody would have mentioned something. And you'll get, you'll get contractors that just refuse to go work at a house. Like say you're working with a plumber and you're, everything's good and you use them all the time and all of a sudden they're like, I'm not going back to that house. Well, then you kind of know as a landlord that something's not right. So do I blame the landlord for this situation? Well, I hate to say it. I, I say, let's say on a spectrum, I say that the landlord is 30 to 40% at fault. This is my opinion. Um, you know, I talk to people all the time. You know, people want to buy investment property. You know, and they say, can you help me? And it's like, yes. Uh, and then they always tell me how much money they're going to make and what a great deal it is. And like, you don't have to tell me what a great deal being a real estate investor is, but um, you don't have to convince me. But, um, I think that there's a lot more people that believe that it's just a surefire moneymaker and that things like this never happen. Um, and are these exceptions to the rules? I, I mean, yes, maybe not this bad, but some people, honestly, they'll, they'll own an investment property and think they'll never have to put any money into it the entire time they own it. And that's not even tr like, like a single family home. Like the one, you, your personal residence, you put money in. So why do you think it wouldn't need it in a rental? So um, was this preventable? You know, it's, it's very interesting. So a after she moved in, 
Uh, should you have required entry into the home every month or so to make sure this house wasn't as disgusting mess? Or were you glad as a landlord that the tenant wasn't calling you with repairs all the time? So did you just think by leaving them alone and they leaving you alone that you were having a good run? Um, you know, when you look at like slumlords uh, we, that we've seen, one of the main complaints is that they come to the units unannounced uh, for inspections. And, and I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. But if you're on the, if, if you are a tenant, you might, you might take a look at, and you're a fair minded person, you might notice that like things like this can happen. And maybe that's the reason why they want to see the unit. Now, of course, if it's in your lease that it's 24 hour notice, so stick to the lease, hope the other person's doing the same. But I mean, obviously you need to be looking at what's going on in the unit over time. And then finally, you know, hoarding is, is bad. I just feel bad for the people involved. Um, somebody's living there and there's a partner and a, and a child also living there in that mess. Um, so, you know, if you, if you know somebody that's in that situation, it's not good, not good. Look to get some help for them. Anyway, that's the story I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I'll catch you on the next one.